Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at what digital means because we throw it around an awful lot in the world of technology. Basically, digital is all about a signal. There are two basic ways we can send signals, send, transmit information, and that is analog as well as digital. Analog is a continuous signal. It has a wave appearance as signals can vary in either strength or speed. So we can either make them more powerful or we can speed them up. Digital is a on or off kind of a thing. It's the way computers and technologies think and work. So we can take a look at how these patterns emerge and we can see AM and FM, amplitude modulation as well as frequency modulation. In amplitude modulation, we're playing with the strength of the signal. In frequency, we're playing with how fast the signal is, how many signals come by in a specific amount of time. And you can see it's a wave format, regardless of whether it's AM or FM. In digital, it's either on or it's off. It's, it's going or it's not going. There really is no in-between. Keep in mind, as we talk about technology, especially in the first series of lessons, as well as lesson two, when you take a look at hardware, computers work internally by sending digital information around the equipment, around the gizmo or the gadget, all that good stuff. Now, because we're talking about binary, or I should say digital, we have to learn about binary. Binary is how we're going to count. So digital signals are sent or not sent. A bit is short for something called a binary digit. I'm sure you've heard the term bit thrown out there before. Now you know what it stands for. Now, little word of warning here. As you go through your journey of technology, you're going to become a little bit of a geek. And by the way, if you haven't noticed in the background, I've got some superheroes up there, a little Star Wars poster. I'm a geek, full blown. There's no hope for me. I am a geek and I'm proud of it. Okay, I was a geek before geeks are cool. Um, but you're going to learn terms and you're going to learn technology. And you're going to find some terms aren't used the right way in everyday language. My advice to you is know the right way to use it and the wrong way to use it. And then don't correct people on the streets. Nobody likes it. So a bit is short for binary digit. A bit is a signal either being sent or not sent. And we represent this by either ones or zeros. One is is information being sent. It's an electric signal. A zero is the absence of the signal. Now here's some cool trivia for you. If you take a look at your computer, your on off button, some will have little switches on them. For example, in the back of the computer where you have an on off switch or take a look at a power supply, you might have an on and off switch. If it's got a one or a zero, that's what we're talking about here, either on or off. In fact, if you look at the power button, Sometimes they have little circles with a line through it. That's a one and a zero on off power. Now, welcome to the world of geekdom. Um, eight of these bits are called a byte. A byte is an actual character. This is a letter or a number. So if you think about this, a bit, a B-I-T, a bit is a signal or a non-signal. It's either sent or it's not sent. To make sense of this, to actually create a letter or a number, you need eight of these bits to create something called a byte. And the byte is a single character. It's the A, B, C, D, or one, two, three. We can use the metric system, by the way, when adding up bytes. So for example, 1,000 bytes is a kilobyte. You might've heard these terms probably if you ever go to a, a big box store and you're looking to buy a computer or you're looking to buy a camera. This is where this is coming from. You have kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes. This is where this information is coming from. And it's telling you how much data it can store or it can capture in the case of cameras. Now, in all, pretty much every intro class that I've seen, as well as BCIS class, you have to learn about the base 10 to binary maybe, maybe not something called hexadecimal. Now, base 10 is something we're all familiar with. We all learned about base 10 from kindergarten all through school. It's a numbering system based on 10. Why do you think it was based on 10? 
He's got 10 fingers, 10 toes, okay? That's how the cavemen learn how to count, by okay? So binary is a little different. Binary isn't exactly that hard. If you take a look here, okay, look at the graphic here, and I'm going to pull this up. We're going to pull up a pen here. If we just take a look at this first column straight down, if you've ever played a musical instrument, I'm going to show you how to make counting by binary fairly simple. Okay, The first thing you'd want to do is create a table where you have your base 10 your binary. You start with zero because you want to start with nothing. Now notice we have four things over here. Okay, We have four numbers together. You have a pattern emerge straight down. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. The reason why I'm saying if you've ever played a musical instrument, this is going to help out because you're probably used to counting beats and rests. So for example, a rest is a non-clap and a beat is a clap. So you have rest, clap, rest, clap, rest, clap, rest, clap, rest, clap, all the way down. So rest, clap, rest, clap, rest, clap, rest, clap, and you do this all the way down. Now, 1 plus 1 equals what? 2. Notice here, rest, rest, clap, clap, rest, rest, clap, clap, rest, rest, clap, clap, rest, rest, clap, clap. Let me switch my pen real quick to maybe an arrow here. Okay, so for the second column, we're going rest, rest, clap, clap, rest, rest, clap, clap, all the way down. <clears throat> the third column, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, boom, 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 rest, 2, 3, 4, boom, 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 all the way down. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8. So now we have 8 and 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then clap. 2, 3, 4, all the way down. At the very end, you should have all 1s. If this doesn't make all 1s at number 15, you've done something wrong. Now hexadecimal you may or may not need to know for your course, but let me just show it to you in case you do make life a little bit easier. Okay, Again, we start with zeros and we go all the way down to 9. We don't start going into a tens column. We don't play with a tens column. There is no tens column in hexadecimal. So there is no 10, there's no 11, there's no 12, there's no 13, there's no 14. Okay, None of this. So once we run out of numbers that we can use, we then jump into the alphabet. So we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. So that's a quick way to do some conversion between your base 10, your binary, and your hexadecimal. We can also do math. And what you want to do here is the first thing you want to do is you want to lay out a table that goes this way, across the top. Again, now let me pause for a second. Okay, we're, we're, By the way, we're making these videos very casual. If you've seen my other videos, you see that I'm in the studio. We're making these more casual so we can get more of these out there to help students. So I'm going to have a little sip of water to help illustrate the point that I hate math. Don't like it. Was happy to get through my math in college. Was done with it. This is not hard math. This is easy math. This is Scott likes this kind of math kind of math, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to make a thing up top. We're going to make a little bit of a table. and We're going to start with 1. 1 plus 1 equals 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 plus 16 is 32. 32 plus 32 is 64. 64 plus 64 is 128. 128 plus 128 is 256. And you can keep going. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take the base 10 4. Remember, base 10 is our normal counting because we have 10 fingers, okay? We want to take 4, and we want to convert it to binary. So all we're doing here is we're adding and we're subtracting. That's it. 4. 
Can 8 go into 4? No. Okay, so there's a 0. Can 4 go into 4? Four? 4 minus 4 is what? Okay, you can put 4 into 4. So we put a 1 here. 4 minus 4 is 0. So 2 can't go into 0, so there's a 0. 1 can't go into 0, so there's a 0. So if we want to write a 4 in binary, it's 0, 1, 0, 0. How about 13? Well, let's take a look at 13. Can 16 go into 13? Nope. Can 8 go into 13? Yes. With whatever's left over, can 4 now go into that? Yes. Can 2 go into it? No. Can 1 go into it? Yes. Okay. So what we're doing is we're putting these numbers in for everyone that can go in there. So that's how we do the math. So let's see if we're paying attention, shall we? Let's do this. Now, if you want to pause the video, now would be a good time to pause the video and see if you can convert these numbers. Remember, the first thing you want to do is create this table up top. Now, a little bit of cheating. If we're only going up to 65, you don't have to worry about 128 or 256. But you do have to get up to 64. So now would be a good time to pause the video and give this a shot yourself. All right. Assuming you're continuing, let's go. 10. 10 into binary. Does 16 go into 10? No. Does 8 go into 10? Yes. 8, 9, 10. We have 2 left. So does 4 go into 2? Nope. Does 2 go into 2? Yep. Now we have 0. Does 1 go into 0? Nope. So in binary, it's 1, 0, 1, 0. How about 31? Does 32 go into 31? No. Does 16 go into 31? Yes. Now, here's a little trick. 31 is one less than an X column. Whenever you have one less than an X column, you light everything up behind it. So, for example, 31 just misses 32. So, all of these added together will equal 31. Okay. Same thing with 15. 15 just misses 16. So, 15 would be lighting up all of these. Same thing with 7. 7 just misses 8. So, all of these would be lit up. Okay, so it's a little bit of a trick. Also notice that I have 0, 0, 0, 1, and then a space, then 1, 1, 1, 1. This is how binary likes to work. You group them in fours, and that's how we write them out. 65, okay. Now, we had one more than 64. So, 64 goes into 65, right? One time, 65 minus 64 is 1. So, nothing, 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 nothing. Boom, there it is. Here's our binary version of 65. Hopefully, you won't have to do too many conversions in class. From most of my experience for intro courses, you just have to have a passing familiarity with it. Hopefully, your professor will go crazy with conversions. But again, this is my happy math kind of world because it's just addition and subtraction. There's no weird, goofy stuff, okay? Um, now, you might be presented a different way to do that in your class. But if you do it the way I showed you to, how to do it, life's pretty simple. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is something called ASCII, the A-S-C-I-I. -I. This is pronounced ASCII, and it stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It is the translation of binary data to text and computers and other communication devices. So our computers are going to get binary information, and the ASCII is how it interprets it. It's kind of like Morse code for the computer. It goes, here's the signals, here's what it translates into. This should not be, <laughs> this right here should not be memorized. You should not have to memorize this character to binary ASCII code. This is you no know, beyond what you should be able to, should have to do in your class. Okay, we're going to continue in our next video. We're going to start talking about what is a computer.